Last time we ventured to Europe in search of bar, the results were spectacular. It was fast, dangerous action, but the boys delivered the goods, with Andy Crow bagging two fine bar. There was more to come though, as a follow-up on a wounded bar provided the most exciting action of the trip. Back in Germany on another driven shoot by the same foresters, we are hoping for more of the same. But we are greeted by very different conditions. It's been snowing and there's plenty of the white stuff. Andy is back with us and tells us how the hunting is conducted. Well, you get put on your pegs. Um, you're not allowed to move off your peg once you've been placed there. You have to stay here till the end of the drive. They usually bring it in for me the one way or another. They just drive it with dogs. And uh, it's just whether you're in the right place. It's just, it's just a lottery and that's how it is. The start of the first drive is quiet, with all the hunters alert for the first signs of wildlife. After we called him a prat last time, Andy has refused to wear a GoPro camera, but we've positioned our cameraman right next to him. All we need now is for the boar to show up. Soon enough the local fauna makes an appearance, but it's a roe deer flushed towards the waiting guns. Dodging between the trees, they look for a way through. Momentary excitement over, it's back to waiting. Andy and the other guns are poised and ready for the action to begin. The snow makes it easy to spot wild boar sign and there's plenty of evidence of where the pigs have been foraging. Following their fine-tuned noses, they can easily locate the food hidden under the snow. Back at Andy's position, it's still quiet. The snowfall has well and truly dampened the usual woodland activity and drawing a blank is becoming a very real possibility. Then, down the forest track, we get a fleeting glimpse of movement. It looks like our waiting is about to be rewarded, but the bar go right past Andy's position and onto another gun, just down the line. Shots ring out and all falls silent, but we'll have to wait to find out the result. On arrival, a clear blood trail is obvious and it seems to have been a close call. Tense moments, but it's all part of the driven hunting experience. It's not knowing, that's the main thing. You never know whether you're going to get a shot, whether you're not. Um, and seeing these animals coming through these woods, they do, they go in a hell of a hurry. It's just the, the buzz of not knowing what's going to happen and what's, what's coming around the corner, so that's a bit all like. The bar is down before our camera gets to it. Already shot in front by a German hunter and still going strong, it had passed within inches of an Englishman, who finished it at close quarters. Time for Jack, the gun in question, to breathe a heavy sigh of relief. Bar do take some stopping and can be lethal when wounded. So from you, Jum. Never mind, that's all right. Uh, uh, you, 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 buy, you buy the beer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After Jack's negotiated who's buying the first round, there's time to inspect the beast more closely. It's come, it's come down at that angle, I think, from the other side. Yeah? I think so. Uh, you exit wound, because yeah? I was from his right hand side, that's exit, yeah. I shot to in from his right hand side all the time. While the guns celebrate, Andy has found something else worth looking at. Evidence of where a bullet has passed through some brash before connecting. Shooting moving game through forestry is no easy task. Bigger is usually better when it comes to projectile choice. Let's have a leg each, one either side, yeah. With the drive over, all that is left to do is get the carcass back to the vehicles before breaking for a well-deserved lunch. Our hopes are up for more action on the next drive. With the usual midday Bavarian feast underway, it's time to process the morning's kills. This is done using a suspended Grelic technique for maximum efficiency. It's the classic Germanic approach at work once again. Everything is done by the book, quickly and effectively. There's a reason German hunting is so well respected. This time for just one afternoon drive. Andy, who has opted for a blazer bolt action, tells us what hunters need to consider when shooting driven boar. Yeah. What do you need to keep in mind if you're coming out ball shooting? The bigger the better. Yeah. Um, don't be anything smaller than a 270. Um, last time I come out I used a 30.06. I hit it in the back of the head and it went straight down, didn't know nothing about it. But 
when they're running, it, you can't always hit them in the head. You want, but you want something really big. Andy is joined by his cousin Gary and Jack as his immediate neighbours. They wet it out in the snowy landscape for more bar. The light is going, but there is still hope. A few shots ring out in the distance, but there's precious little activity at our position. Last time I had an over and under, this time I've got a bolt action. I use rifle back home shooting rabbits and that, so 1.7, I shoot quite a lot of rabbits on the move, well it's, uh, it's, it's something that I can do, I do but it's, it's only through practice. Uh, it's something that if, if you are going to come out and have a go at it, it it'll pay to go to a range um, and have some practice. It's not something you just pick up a rifle and, and go out and I'm going to shoot driven bore because it's, it's not as easy as that. You've, You've got, to have your, you've got to know what you're doing, as simple as that. The drive is over all too quickly, and Andy had to be content with watching his neighbours shoot. There are a few more pigs taken on this drive, and with the light fading, the hunters check out their hard-won prizes before heading out of the forest. <laughs> After a day in the snow, it's time for some much-needed warmth. Comforted by fire, food and beer, the hunters swap stories and toast the fallen game. Yeah, they, they really do go for tradition here, and I, I like all that, and it's, it's really good. They re respect the animals big time, yeah, they do. I'd like to see more of it from other people, really, and other countries, well, especially ours, really. The next morning sees the guns positioned in an adjacent forest. It's immediately clear that there is a lot of bar moving through here. Hopefully Andy will have more luck standing beside such an active run. Checking his rifle out, Andy prepares for his last day at Wild Bar this season. Everyone is ready and in their positions waiting for the bar to show. But Andy is starting to think he is cursed as yet again nothing comes his way. Then shots from down the line signify the action has begun. Andy spots the sounder through the trees. There are more than 20 of them, but they are a long way below. And unfortunately, that's where they stay. Later, he would find out that they ran straight towards his cousin. At least some luck stayed within the family. I think next time I come, I will bring my semi-auto, because it, it fits me like a glove, so I'm going to give it a go with semi-auto and slugs. Most of the shooting you do, it's only 50 yards. Um, well, you only had to shoot to 50 yards, so um, that's how it is. So I'm going to give it a go with my auto next time. I haven't got anything this trip, but it's the way it goes. But I had a good, good trip last time, so I had a couple of nice ones last time, so I enjoyed that. So, but hopefully, more luck next time. But.